Good evening. Welcome to our Christmas Eve communion service. It's lovely to have you with us. Um, as part of uh, the uh, protections that we're taking at the moment, we, we, won't, we won't have live singing uh, during our, uh, our service this morning, but we, this morning, well, it will be, it will be morning soon um, tonight, but uh, we will be hearing some singing as part of our worship. The Old Testament prophet Isaiah, looking ahead to the day of Jesus, said this, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and you will call him Emmanuel. And in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, we read, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins." All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophets, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Let's pray. Through Advent, we've watched and waited, and now once again, this is the time to enter into the mystery the drama, the wonder of God coming to earth, of the eternal stepping into time, of the divine becoming human, God becoming one of us, Emmanuel, God with us. So loving Lord, open our eyes to the wonder and joy of Jesus. Open our hearts to welcome Him in. Open our lives to be infectious hosts of the life of Jesus in our world. Holy Spirit, come among us and upon us. So may Jesus be the center of our thoughts and words and actions. Jesus, our brother, our savior, our Lord, our King, we wait to welcome you now. Amen.
They always get stuck. Luke chapter 1, verses 39 to 45. Mary visits Elizabeth. At that time, Mary got ready and hurried to a town in the hill country of Judea, where she entered Zechariah's home and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the baby leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. In a loud voice, she exclaimed, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child you will bear. But why am I so favored that the mother of my Lord should come to me? As soon as the sound of your greeting reached my ears, the baby in my womb leaped for joy. Blessed is she who has believed that the Lord would fulfill his promises to her. Thanks very much, Andrew. Of course, it would have helped if I'd given you the, um, the rest of the reading, which I didn't. Um, so the rest of the reading, picking up from verse 46. And Mary said, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is his name. His mercy extends to those who fear him from generation to generation. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever, just as he promised our ancestors. Earlier this evening, um, we were uh, sitting around as family um, with a, an Indian takeaway Christmas playlist on, um, and the, the Christmas playlist caused quite a bit of debate in the household. Um, so one of my sisters wanted to know why there wasn't more Michael Bublé in the playlist, and this was clearly unreasonable. Um, I thought one out of 20 was excessively reasonable, but there we go. Um, uh, Alison was quite happy because there was a bit of Cliff Richard in there. And, um, and then there was a bit of discussion as to whether the John Lewis Christmas advert song counts as a Christmas song or, or not. But if you, were to, if you were to say what you think is the, the greatest ever Christmas song, what might you say? Bing Crosby's White Christmas has um, often topped the polls uh, when, uh, when these kind of things have been uh, checked out. Um, Carol, the carol that seems to be consistently the most popular is Silent Night. But, you know, I, I think a contender for the greatest ever Christmas carol is something that was written, something that was sung 2,000 years ago by a teenage peasant girl visiting her cousin. And it was Elizabeth's insight that sparked this prophetic outpouring from, uh, from Mary. As Elizabeth said, blessed are you among women, and blessed is the child that you bear. And then Mary blurts out this Christmas carol like no other. This is, this is not uh, sugar-coated. It packs a punch. It's not sweet. It's subversive. And in fact, uh, these, these words uh, that I read for you uh, a few moments ago, these words of Mary, often called the, the Magnificat, have been banned in several places at different times in history. Um, they were banned by uh, the British uh, in, uh, in India during, their, during the British rule of India because the words were considered too subversive. Um, in Guatemala in 1980s, um, uh, there was a, a growing popularity among some of the poor and oppressed people to sing out 
these words, the Magnificat, and the, uh, the, the rulers of Guatemala banned these words because they were considered to be too dangerous, and they didn't want the poor to get the idea from these words that God has a preferential love for the poor. And then in Argentina, the, uh, the mothers of the disappeared began to paste the words of the Magnificat um, onto, uh, onto the, uh, all around the walls of the, the central square in, uh, in Buenos Aires, and, uh, and eventually the, the ruling military junta banned the, uh, the public display of these words. Um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer um, was a a wartime German theologian ed executed by the Nazis. And he said this in 1933, just before Christmas. He said, The song of Mary is the oldest Advent hymn. Is that it is at once the most passionate, the wildest, one might even say the most revolutionary hymn ever sung. This is not the gentle, tender, dreamy Mary who we sometimes see in paintings. This song has none of the sweet, nostalgic, or even playful tones of some of our Christmas carols. It is instead a hard, strong, inexorable song about the power of God and the powerlessness of humankind. And when these when these words tumbled out from Mary's lips, they, they started off as words of praise and amazement. My soul glorifies the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior. I, I, he's, been, he's been mindful of the humble state of His servant. And, and so, she's saying that she's amazed. She's saying that she is blessed. And that's a good place for us to start in our relationship with, with God too. But so often with these words, we, we like the first bit about glorifying God and, and being blessed and God remembering His humble servant, but we so often don't go on to the next bit because this song turns pretty quickly to fighting talk, talk of bringing down rulers and the sense that the baby inside her was revolutionary. And when people around heard these words of Mary and heard her singing about bringing down rulers, the ruler that would come immediately to mind was Herod. Um, because everyone, everyone knew that this was, the, this was the, the power of the day. Herod the Great, he was called the King of the Jews, and Herod knew how to hold on to power. Um, and he did everything uh, that he could to, uh, to continue to, uh, to grasp on to power. He was, uh, he was ruthless in so many ways. Herod built huge buildings. He built a temple for the Jewish people, which sounds, uh, which sounds great, but it was, it was actually very controversial because he built the temple and his other vast buildings by taxing the poor so heavily that they lost their land because they couldn't afford to keep up the payments, and so they became destitute. By the time Mary sang her song, Herod was a, an unpredictable, cruel, unstable king who killed people at whim. And then behind Herod was the might and the oppressive power of the Roman Empire. The Romans who required Mary to walk 70 miles when she was full-term pregnant and to seek accommodation in a town of two to 300 people swelled massively by the influx of people drawn there for the census. And when Mary was in Bethlehem and giving birth to Jesus, if she looked southeast, from her stable, she would have seen uh, Herodium. Herodium was uh, Herod's palatial complex. It was unmissable from anywhere in Bethlehem because it was set on an 800-meter-high man-made 
hill, and it was the largest palatial complex um, of, of its day anywhere in the Roman world. And I wonder, as she looked out over Herodium and over the, uh, the palatial might of Herod, I wonder if she sang her song over Jesus. He has sent the rich away empty. He has brought down rulers. I picture fire in her eyes as she sings a song with courage, fists clenched against an unknown future, trusting God that He will put right the evils of Herod, that He will put right the evils of Caesar, that He will bring low every despot and every petty power monger. I wonder what's on your Christmas playlist. I don't suppose Elton John and Ed Sheeran are going to be singing, He Sent the Rich Away Empty. You're not likely to be hearing Bing Crosby crooning, I'm dreaming of rulers brought down from their thrones. But really, this is something that's at the heart of Christmas, at the heart of what the coming of Jesus is about. And like all good carols, there's a, there's a pattern to her song. It's just an, an unexpected one. So she sings, He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but He has lifted up the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things, but He has sent the rich away empty. He scattered the proud in their inmost thoughts, but He has been mindful of the humble state of His servants. The world's Christmas message is blessed are the beautiful, blessed are the rich, blessed are the successful, blessed are the secure, blessed is Herod. But Mary sings about a God who reverses things. The people who are in are out. The people who are up who are down. The people who are successful are now not. God turns everything upside down. And the bump that swells in Mary's tummy becomes the child who becomes the man who says things like, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who hunger, blessed are the meek. He spoke of good news for the poor and freedom for the prisoners and justice for the oppressed. I wonder where he got his material from. Could it be that some of that came from his mum. As Mary sang her songs and prayed her prayers over him, did he learn from her first that God won't tolerate injustice and, and greed on a permanent basis? Did she teach him that it angers God when people are selfish and violent, when, they, when the rich watch the poor go hungry? Jesus would take a different way. He would choose to suffer. He would choose the way of humility as befits the king born in a stable. He would choose suffering and the way of the cross to overcome the dominion of sin and to bring good news to the poor. So the song of Mary grows into the song of her son. And it's a song that proclaims that the Herods and the Caesars will fall, that the British Raj will fall, that the, the Guatemalan rulers and the uh, Argentinian junta and every other ruler that sets itself up in opposition to God will fall. And the song of Mary grows into the song of her son and swells into a song of millions who worship at his stable. So just like Mary, may your song start with joy. As you say, I am blessed by God. My soul glorifies my God, glorifies the Lord. 
the Savior has been born. Welcome Him in. And just like Mary, may your song grow and swell because wherever you, wherever you care for the poor and wherever you stand up for injustice and wherever you trust in the God who will put things right, you are singing the song of Mary that becomes the song of Jesus, which is the song that will prevail. We're going to pray. And I'd like to invite you to, uh, to speak out these words which will intersperse our prayers. So let's speak these words together. My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for He has been mindful of the humble state of His servant. So take just a moment to reflect on all that Jesus means to you. Invite him to be right at the center of your life this Christmas. And then we say together, from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me. Holy is His name. So take a moment just to, in the quietness of your heart, bring your love, your praise to God. And again together. His mercy extends to those who fear Him from generation to generation. Let's take a moment to pray quietly or aloud for those who love and serve God around the world. If you want to speak out the names of people and places. And together. He has performed mighty deeds with his arm. He has scattered those who are proud in their inmost thoughts. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. So let's remember places and people who are under pressure because of poverty or injustice from the proud opponents of this moment, those who need God's help and strength. And then one more time together. He has filled the hungry with good things but has sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel, remembering to be merciful to Abraham and his descendants forever. So this Christmas, just like Mary, may your song be filled with joy because you are blessed. This Christmas, just like Mary, may your song of the Savior lead you to care for the poor the downtrodden, and the unseen. This Christmas, know that this song will grow louder and stronger as the King who came to be born in a stable, the King who came to be born in your heart, is the King of the whole world. Amen. Step down from heaven 
Jesus was born to bring us home to God, to show us by his life what God looks like, and then by his death to bring us home to him. On the night before he died, Jesus took bread and wine and he gave it to his disciples and he said, this bread is my body, this cup is my blood. And when you eat the bread and the, you drink the cup, you remember me until I come again. In a few moments, I'll invite you to come and to, uh, to receive uh, bread and wine. Um, the, the bread and wine has been uh, laid out for you, so please just pick up your own uh, piece of bread uh, and your own uh, cup of wine and take a moment to be thankful for all that Jesus has done for you as you receive. Let's pray. Lord, we don't come to you because we're good. We come because we are in need and because you're good. Forgive us for the good not said and done, for the evil thought and said and done. Thank you, because the Jesus of the cradle became the Christ on the cross, and our sins are washed away, our forgiveness is bought, our hope is assured. And as we come again to the cross, we see your power, not only over our personal sin and shame, we see your justice for our world and your victory over all who stand against you. And so, as we kneel before you in this moment, 
keep us humble and so lift us up. Merciful Jesus, there's nothing we can bring to make us worthy of you. We can't buy your favor or earn your grace. As we receive the bread, your body given for us, and as we receive the wine, your blood poured out for us, we come with open hands and thankful hearts in the wonderful name of Emmanuel, Savior, Jesus. Amen. Please, when you're ready, come and receive bread and wine. Shepherds watch their flocks by night, all seated on the ground. The angel of the Lord came down, and glory shone around. Fear not, said he, for mighty dread had seized their troubled minds. Glad tidings of great joy I bring. To you and all mankind. To you in David's town this day is born of David's line. The Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this shall be the sign. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Let's take a few minutes just in stillness as we pray together and get ready to welcome in Christmas Day. We come tonight to a creator who entered his creation. You, Lord, are the God and maker of all. And to bring a wayward world back to you, you chose the most unsuspecting of women to mother your son. As we wait for your coming among us with the joy that was Mary's, may our souls glorify the Lord and may our spirits rejoice in God's, our Savior. We come tonight to a Savior who was born to die. We thank you, Lord, that you laid aside your glory, your majesty. You left the worship of angels day and night and chose to pitch your tent among us, to become human, to become one of us, to become love's sacrifice for us. As we wait for your coming among us, may our hearts know the depth of love in the God who came for us. We come tonight to a God who has revealed the power of heaven here on earth, the virgin with child. We worship you because nothing is impossible for you, our mighty God. And we worship you because in the birth of Christ, your power is turned towards love. As we wait for your coming among us, may our inmost being know that the power of your love can accomplish anything and everything in our lives. We come tonight as part of a world which has chosen to go its own way. We recognize our part in our world's rebellion. We confess the times when we rule on our own thrones, our own little kingdoms, edging out your good rule and reign. We confess when our riches have left us empty because we've chased money and things at the expense of chasing after your heart. We confess the ways we've been wrapped up in our own lives and not seen the poor and the vulnerable and the powerless. Jesus, you are merciful. You are good. You show us your strong, deep love, the God who chose to be born in a stable and to die on a cross. As we wait for your coming among us, may our consciences know that in mercy you forgive all who turn to you and in grace you give us new life. So we come now this Christmas morning to kneel at the stable, to give our hearts to the one who gave all for us. We come to declare hope for our world and for our lives because the light which has begun to shine in the darkness can never be overcome. We proclaim with joy that the baby born in the stable is none other than the Lord of heaven and earth, and the light of his love will prevail. As we celebrate your coming among us, may everything that's within us give glory to the King of kings and Lord of lords born among us. Amen. wish you a happy and very blessed Christmas. A final prayer.
blessing for you as you go. Go from here with joy. Jesus Christ is born among us. Go from here in love. God's priceless gift brings you life in all its fullness. Go from here in peace. God's gift in the stable is the Christ who is with you always by his Spirit. Go from here in hope. The kingdom of God that began in Bethlehem will one day be complete when Jesus Christ returns for his own. Go from here in the power of the Spirit to take the joy, the love, the peace, and the hope of Jesus to family, friends, neighbors, and the world that needs the good news of Jesus Christ born among us. Glory to Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.